What's up YouTube? This is Cody Bidlow with Athlete X. Today we're going to be talking about the question of, do training masks really work? Now to answer that question we have to define what do we mean by work. So we should look at what are the claims that are being made by either the companies who produce these products or the people who wear them or promote them, um, how that stacks up against the research, and also, equally important, how does that stack up against the logic? The claim that is made is that they simulate altitude training. So first of all, what happens when you train at altitude? Well, because you're higher up in elevation, the concentration of oxygen in the air is lower. So for every unit of air that you breathe in, the amount of oxygen within that unit of air is less compared to what it would be at, say, sea level. So you might breathe in one liter of air, okay, but the amount of oxygen in that liter is less than what it would be if you were at sea level breathing in a liter of air as well. The reason that your body benefits from training at altitude, for example, is that because of that lower concentration, your body has to go about working to ensure that it can handle operating in, a, in an environment where oxygen is at a lower concentration. So it's gonna increase the production of blood cells. You might, you know, that might be caused by an increase in EPO naturally produced by your body. Um, you know, I'm not extremely well versed on the science of aerobic metabolism, so I'm not gonna claim that I know things that I don't. But what I do know is that when you do train at altitude, you do tend to get an increase in red blood cell count. That's gonna help you carry oxygen more efficiently. Um, and I'm sure there are other structural changes in the lungs or um, you know, other biochemical, physiological changes that happen that help you carry oxygen more effectively and use it more efficiently. Um, but the main point is that that process is happening because there is a lower concentration of oxygen in the you know, air that you're breathing. So when we look at training masks, what are they doing? You know, if you're gonna claim that a training mask is simulating altitude training, then the training mask must reduce the concentration of oxygen per unit of air that you breathe. And unfortunately, that's not the case. So how does a training mask work? Well, as you breathe in, you are breathing in the normal concentration of oxygen you're just breathing against resistance. So a long time ago when these came out, I bought one, I thought, well, this is an interesting idea, might as well try it. Immediately, I was, it was very clear to me what was going on, and that the resistance on the training mask, as you breathe in, it's resisting the air that is coming in. So what are you doing? You're strengthening you know, your diaphragm and the other muscles involved in respiration, but what you aren't getting is a hypoxic effect that you would receive, say, being in a hyperbaric chamber or training at altitude, which is it is not changing the concentration of oxygen of what you're breathing in. So if there are physiological adaptations which are dependent upon lower concentrations of oxygen and that the companies making these or the people using them are claiming that you're going to get the same benefits that you would get training at altitude, then those claims are false because the environment that you're in training at altitude is different than what you're receiving when you breathe through this apparatus. Okay, The difference is at altitude the concentration of oxygen in the air is different versus with a mask all you're getting is a resistance against the air that you're breathing in. So you're having to work harder to breathe but once you have inhaled the same amount of air that you would inhale without the mask it's the same concentration of oxygen. So you're not stressing the body in a similar way to training at altitude because when you train at altitude there is no resistance but there is a lower concentration of oxygen and with the mask you have the same concentration of oxygen that you have normally at that elevation say at sea level but it's resisted so the effects are not going to be that you all of a sudden produce more red blood cells it's going to be that the muscles that you breathe with are going to get stronger I'm not saying that's a bad thing I'm not saying that there's no benefit to that but what I am saying is that it is not the same thing at all as training at altitude. One could argue that wearing a mask is going to inhibit your ability to train hard and in the longer term is gonna inhibit your adaptations to training. So if you're out at the track and you're wearing a, an elevation mask, 
okay, aka a resisted breathing apparatus, that because of the fact that you're working harder to breathe and that you're having to work really hard to take in that air, that that will cause fatigue to set in quicker and the quality of your workout will decline sooner than it would if you didn't have that mask on. So to sum everything up, uh, you know, the way I see it is that do elevation training masks really work or do altitude training masks really work? I don't think so. Uh, they aren't going to affect the concentration of oxygen you're breathing in. So because of that, you're not going to have the hematological changes that you would get out of training up on a mountain that's 5,000 feet in the air. Um, you will improve your ability to inhale as far as the strength of the muscles for respiration is concerned. Um, I don't necessarily know that you need that or that that's going to benefit you in your sprinting, lifting, training, you know, in general, but it is something that can come from using one of these masks. Um, but you also have to consider that it is possible that while training with these masks, you're actually going to have inhibited capabilities during your training session. So, for example, in one study talked about how in the back squat, bench press, and sprint test that the people in this study performed all of those slower while wearing the mask. So if your goal is velocity, you know, such as being a sprinter or a running back or a wide receiver, then you should probably think twice about wearing a training mask when it's going to inhibit your ability to perform at high velocities um, and at the same quality level that you would without the mask. So please leave your comments below. I'm interested to see and hear what you guys have to say about this topic. Um, please smash up the, the likes button, subscribe while you're here so you can stay tuned to any videos that I have coming out here in the near future. Check me out on Instagram at athlete.x, um, on Twitter at Cody Bidlow, and at my website athletex.us. Thanks again for swinging by. I'll catch you next time.